Hello, so we're going to talk today about uh, budgeting. Okay, so uh, specifically uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to uh, set up a budget, what budgets are for in government accounting, and kind of some of the accounting that goes into budgetary accounting, specifically related to the general fund. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the special revenue funds as well because we want to budget for, for all of the funds uh, eventually when, as we get going here. Okay, so some of our learning objectives, we're going to be uh, describing how operating revenues and expenses uh, related to governmental activities are classified and reported in the government-wide financial statements. We're also going to talk about uh, distinguishing the governments uh, in government funds between revenues and other financial resources and between expenditures and other financial uses. Okay, we're going to explain how revenues and expenses, expenditures are classified in the general fund and other governmental uh, funds. Okay, uh, and then we're going to explain how budgetary accounting contributes to achieving budgetary control over revenues and expenditures, including uh, recording the annual budget, accounting for revenues, accounting for encumbrances, accounting for allotments, and also reconciling the, the gap in the budgetary amounts. Uh, we're going to describe governmental accounting systems. We're going to explain the classification of revenues and expenditures of a public school system. That's going to be some something we're going to talk about um, a little bit here uh, if we can get to it. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to try to keep this brief, hopefully, so that you can um, get the most out of watching this lecture video um, and just keep it to the most important things for. So uh, so we have really are um, uh, this is kind of a modified accounting equation here so this one the net sp net expense or revenue for each function or program reported for governmental activities is displayed in the government-wide statement of activities the format of the reporting is as follows okay so the format here is we've got our uh, expenses minus our program revenues equals our net expenses or net revenue. Okay. The functions and program represent major activities and services of the government. Again, when I uh, go through these slides, get the letters off the slides as I go so you can have those for the quiz. So we're going to talk about functions and programs. So first off, functions are group related uh, activities that are aimed at accomplishing a major service or regulatory responsibility such as public safety right so this is uh, the functions of government right so this is their main one of their major um, activities that they produce so this is kind of activity here activities that are aimed at accomplishing a, a, the major goal or mission of the government right okay uh, so our programs, though, are uh, a group of activities, operations, or organizational units. So this is going to be expanded a little bit with operations and units. And the activities can be also thrown in there that are directed at attaining a specific purpose, purpose or objectives, uh, such as highway beautification. Okay, So function is really uh, about... Uh, what we do right and this is more so about how or who does it is a program so program and general revenues so program revenues are reported in the functions program section of the statement so this is a government-wide statement that we're talking about so this is program revenues and then our general revenues are in a separate section at the bottom of the statement So these are split uh, expenses. Direct expenses are reported in the line for a specific function or program, right? So indirect, it can also be called like, it's kind of like overhead, but instead of overhead, it's it, things that aren't necessarily related specifically to functions and programs. Things that maybe cover more than one, uh, cover several 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 functions or programs right functions or programs 
right? Can't necessarily be, be directly attached to a program or a function. Maybe it's more than one program or functions are going to be the indirect. Okay, program and revenue, uh, program and general revenues. Program revenues are reported separately from the general uh, revenues in the government-wide operating statement. So this is the government-wide. So separate reporting allows statement users to evaluate uh, whether functions or programs are self-sufficient or require. So it's really their perf their performance, right? So it's it's accountability that we're going after here. Right. So that's one thing that we want. Okay. So program revenue categories. So what kind of revenues are we going to get for programs? Okay, so these are charges for services are the very beginning ones, right? So charges for services. Um, so these are like, for example, your like your water, your water bill from a city, right? Uh, operating grants and contributions. So these are going to be uh, grants, like specific programs set up for uh, operations um, so this sometimes this is done for certain safety features right so so there's grants that are given f from the government for certain safe uh, safe water in, in a city or something like that right so these, these are programs usually handed down from like state or, or or even federal governments down below okay capital grants and contributions so these are grants that are set up. Sometimes they are uh, tax related or they are bond related, right? So these are like, for example, to build the new science building, right? The capital grant was given for three million to fund uh, building the science building from the state. And then another three million were raised from donors. So there, there is a kind of both, right? Combined there. Okay, reporting special items and certain transfers. So the following items are reported as separate line items below general revenues in the statement of activities. Okay, so below general revenues here. So these are special items or items within government's control that may be either unusual or infrequent. Okay, so what? So the general revenues, right? Um, so for example, maybe you got a special uh, amount of uh, in, a, in a lawsuit, right? So there was a lawsuit, and your city was involved, or your government unit was involved, and so you got a lawsuit uh, judgment, right, in your favor. Mint, okay. Uh, extraordinary items are items that, that are events that are both unusual in nature and in, infrequent in, in occurrence. So this one's either or special items, either unusual or infrequent, not both. Right? Extraordinary are both. Unusual and infrequent. Okay. Transfers between governmental activities and business type activities. So these are these are specific transfers, and a lot of times they're they're between. Well, yeah, so they're going to be between departments or at least the different types of activities, right? So transfers between types of activities. Okay, structure. The primary governmental fund is the general fund, right? So we have a general fund. And really, what the general fund is there for is it? It's there to um, account for uh, current financial resources raised, okay, and expended for the core government services. So whatever the core mission is of the government, whatever the core services are, the general fund covers those or is set up to track revenues and expenses. Special revenue fund. So this is something different right so we have the general fund up here and we have what's called a special revenue fund so these are these are funds that are set up that receive special funds that are ear tagged for uh, certain things so funds coming from outside donors or a grantor or tax or other revenue doesn't matter what 
their specific purpose, okay, specified purpose funds, not general purpose, right, not unrestricted. These are restricted specifically for certain items. That's special revenue fund. Okay, so here's kind of a setup of uh, all the different governmental funds. So here's governmental funds, right? And so we could have the general fund. This is for the, the main mission of the, the main services or activities of the government unit. Special revenue, this is where the revenue is uh, restricted with for uh, purpose, right? Okay, debt service, this is also restricted for purpose, but a specific kinds of purpose, to pay back debt. Capital projects funds, this is, uh, this is during construction. And we'll talk about these. These are set up during construction. Construction, okay. And then our permanent funds are some other things typically like set up like for endowments or maybe clubs or maybe certain types of specific uh, entities set up within the government itself. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the government fund balance sheet uh, usually looks like this, right? So here's our assets, current assets in this case, and deferred outflow of resources. So this is this is kind of deferred outflow of resources. Um, in many cases, this would be considered a liability, but because we're doing modified accrual, the, that's an asset. So stuff we don't have to pay off yet is going to be something that's an asset. So we're going to subtract here our liabilities, and in this case it's current because we're looking at short term here on the governmental fund, and also deferred inflow. So that is bad right we've got some resources that are supposed to be coming in if they're deferred um, then we're not going to count them and so that's going to count on the liability side and this is our fund balance okay not Facebook fund balance okay so here we go governmental fund operating statement accounts uh, we, we've got the, the, the operating the operating statement we're going to have revenues in there and we're going to have expenditures. This kind of looks like the like a net income, right? But on the government side, net income is a uh, net change in position. Okay? A net change. If we got more revenue than expenses, then our fund balance is going to go up uh, or vice versa, right? So here's budgetary accounts. So this is kind of one of the main purposes today is to talk about our budgetary accounts. So so we, we talk about this first part. So the, the fact that budgets are legally binding. So this is super important. So legally binding budgets. So governments, there are rules set up that say that a government must have an adopted budget to even spend money and to collect taxes. It has to have a budget. There is no if ands, or buts about it. The budget has to be passed. That's why the federal government shuts shuts the uh, shuts everything down when they can't figure out what their budget is. It shuts everything down. So unless government has a budget set, it cannot spend money. It cannot tax. Okay, each operating account has a corresponding uh, budgetary account. So whether that's a revenue or expense, right? Everything's going to have the budgetary um, account that that's gonna um, offset it uh, with the exception for encumbrances so encumbrances the budgetary accounts have normal balance so with the exceptions of the encumbrances budgetary accounts have normal balances that are opposite so like for example revenues typically their normal balance is going to be a credit the budget right the budgetary accounts for revenues are going to be debit does that make sense so on the expense side uh, typically they are debits uh, on the budget they're going to be credits uh, encumbrances don't follow that offsetting or uh, opposites 
they're actually going to be the same side. Okay, so it's going to be these encumbrances are going to be the same, and we'll we'll talk about those a little later. Okay, so here we have a balance sheet and operating statement accounts. Okay, so balance sheet is going to be our balance sheet. Operating statement is kind of like our income statement here. Uh, so we have our asset accounts here, deferred outflow of resources, right? So this, that's why everything that makes up that, right? This is our an expanded version of that previous uh, equation that we saw. So we have our liability accounts and deferred, okay? And then our fund balance accounts depends on what, if they're restricted or, assign, or, or assigned, right? So some are restricted, some are committed, some are assigned, some are unassigned, uh, some are non-spendable. So, so it, that really just says, okay, so our assets that we have claim to, uh, maybe we can't use them for, the, for our current needs. Maybe they're for future needs. Maybe they're for specific needs. Uh, you know, they're, they're restricted and, and committed or assigned and, uh, and non-spendable in many ways. Unassigned uh, is not normal. Then here's our income statement or our operating statement of accounts is our revenues, expended, expenditures, uh, other financial resources, and other financial uses. Okay, so here's budget. There's budgetary accounts, right? So to offset our revenues, we have estimated revenues. Appropriations offset our expenditures. <clears throat> Here's our other financial resources that are connected with the revenues, kind of, right? And as other uh, financial uses, which are kind of uh, connected to our expenditures as well. Encumbrances and outstand encumbrances outstanding. These two work together separately from the rest of them. And then we have a budgetary uh, fund balance that's set up. Okay, budgetary and operating account relationships. So estimated revenues is the budgetary account, right? Right here, this is the budgetary account. The operating account is actually revenues, right? So the net balance indicates deficit or of operating or budgetary uh, or an excess in um, the budgetary revenues okay okay so th so this is kind of what the when you we, we find the difference between the difference uh, between these two accounts right Th this column over here budgetary status is going to tell us what that really means for our budget right reporting budgeted and actual results right budget to actual that's that's a one term that it's that's often used is uh, budget to actuals. So that's where we're comparing them. We're comparing budget to actual. Okay, so and that is super important. That's actually required on many of the reports, right? GASB standards require that a budget to actual comparison be provided in the general fund for each major special revenue fund. Uh, oh, and for the general fund, of course, which is legally adopted. So this needs to be a legal budget. Individual fund ba uh, budgetary comparisons are required to be presented at the legal level of budgetary control, which represents the fund, program, or organizational unit at which expenditures may not exceed appropriations without a formal budgetary amendment. So if, if uh, like, for example, the city... <coughs> if the city was going to spend uh, some money beyond their budget, they would have to get the city council together and make an amendment. That it would be called a supplementary budget and to be able to spend above their budgetary uh, constraints, right? Because they legally set the budget and they have to stick with it. They can't go over it. Only in cases of emergency. And then and that's very rare. Okay, uh, actual amounts in a budgetary comparison should be presented using the government's budgetary basis. Okay, so whether that's cash accrual or modified accrual. 
vegetarian operating account terminology. So this is some some important terminology to understand. That was, this is um, presented in a couple different ways. So an appropriation is a legal authorization to expend cash. So this is this is one of the uh, terms right here. Appropriation. Appropriation is basically it's budget, right? We appropriate it when we budget it. Uh, liabilities authorized by an appropriation have been incurred. Okay, the appropriation is said to be expended. Okay, thus the budgetary appropriations are sometimes called. So when when we budget, we we call these estimated expenditures. Okay. So expenditures are expended appropriations, right? Expenditures are when you spend your budget, right? That's the idea. Expenses that were set up in the budget. <clears throat> okay, so expenditure classification. So here, so here's kind of uh, some of the different classes of expenditures, right? So expenditures by fund, right? By fund, expenditures by function or program. So depending on what the program or the function is, <coughs> we break up our expenditures by that. <coughs> so the fund, for example, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the fund uh, and our f function and program. So these are all going to be ordered. Okay, or we're going to classify our expenditures by them. So we're going to say uh, expenditures by fund, expenditures by by program, expenditures by organization unit. In this case, in this case, we may have a unit in, within our organization that's daycare, right? Or we can do it by specific activity. So maybe all associated uh, expenses for maybe the the morning daycare or. Um, and then by the character is, this one's going to be specifically for maybe supplies, right? The character of the classification. So here's the revenue estimated. Uh, this is revenue and estimated revenue classification. So it's just by, by fund, source, and secondary class. So sources available. Uh, a government may raise revenues only for sources available to it by law so it has to raise taxes so that's the that's the main thing right and in some cases uh, the government may also be able to charge fees for services okay so these then here's how I started out with classifications but really this is how the revenues are classified right So the major revenue source codes. So he, these are these are definitely the classifications for uh, some revenues, right? We got taxes, special assessments, licensing and permits. So this is all. These are all types of revenues uh, classes that could be uh, set up by a government um, in its uh, revenue codes, right? So may have for the general revenue, for example, or whatever revenues for any any fund, it could have these revenue uh, classifications within the funds. So these are going to be things like, for example, forfeits are going to be things like you pay a deposit and you do not uh, do what it takes to get the deposit back. You don't collect it. So taxes, uh, these are things, so the government, really this is what sets governments apart. And we're going to be doing, uh, the, the taxes are going to be uh, levied. So we also need to understand that our taxes under the, uh, are recorded under the modified accrual basis. That means they have to be measurable and available. So we can measure how much taxes we're going to receive, but they also have to be available, meaning they have to be collected and available to us to spend okay so here's different types of taxes right that's one of our main revenue sources right so our ad valorem taxes property taxes so really the ad valorem and property taxes is going to be based off of uh, value so the value of property the value of, um, of products those type of things 
Okay, so sales taxes, of course, if you have it, then you're going to be charging. Oregon doesn't have it. Income taxes. Um, there's also gross receipts taxes. Uh, a lot of times it's just volume of sale or, or sometimes uh, people call this a value added tax maybe is, is kind of going along the same lines as that. A VAT tax. So um, death and gift taxes, of course, and then interest and penalties on delinquent taxes because if you do not pay your taxes, right, then you can charge the penalties for it. Okay, so our tax levy process. So this is something we're going to be, uh, as you set your budget, the governing bodies of the uh, government unit has to approve a, a rate, a set rate to levy taxes at. So that's something that has to be done. Okay, this is a legally binding process. Part of the budget is setting your tax levy base, your tax base. So that's something that has to be done. Okay, so we've got our residual uh, source. Um, and so kind of kind of the way this works is, um, so we've got our, uh, our taxes, right? So we've got to uh, figure out Okay, so how much are resources do we need based on appropriations? And then what is that? What is the tax level that we need to have to sustain those appropriations? You can go either way on that, but it's important to understand that governments have to manage their appropriations in in and their revenues together at the same time. So here we go. So this is the delinquent, right? So if taxes are delinquent, then there can be interest charge for taxes not paid and governments can also make people pay them okay so uh again we're, we're doing modified accrual basis for accounting when we're talking about our sales taxes or income taxes all this so it has to be measurable and available to spend so that's kind of an important part with taxes just to reiterate So special assessments, these are special types of uh, taxes or fees that are charged for, like say for example, when we built the science building for the college, uh, there was a special assessment that was made, right? So that was a capital improvement. There was a special assessment made by the city to the college because they were going to have to redo some, some curbing and some a sewer and a bunch of other stuff that normally isn't done for just normal residential building and so sometimes capital projects like the science building the city is going to say hey you know what we really want you to build this building but we're going to have to charge it for it because we have expenses that we have to cover on our own okay so here's here's licensing permits these are things that uh, governments can also charge right so building permits uh and uh and the animal licenses, those are going to be mostly local, right, government. Business license and vehicle, a lot of times that's like at least state, right? That's going to be state. So the local, it just depends on what type of government you have and what kind of licenses and permits that they have the jurisdiction to um, oversee. They're going to want the revenues for it, for sure. So here's the intergovernment intergovernmental revenue so that's usually money coming either for, to the state from uh, uh, like the bigger government unit down to the smaller government unit typically that's what it ha happens so federal to state or state to county or state to city or county to city you know the, that kind of mix or even federal to city or federal to uh, an education district like the college Okay, so uh, one thing you need to know is is kind of where those where the that transfer is happening, and um, and who is it coming from, and is it restricted? Um, so these are all things. Typically, the the money that comes from those are mandated to be spent on certain things. So charges for services; these are all different charges that governments can 
can uh, charge people for services, fees for services, right? Tuition's one of them. Not necessarily considered a fee, but you know, it may, a lot of them have its their own names. Okay. Um, again, fines and forfeits. A lot of times, if you deposit and you don't come back for it, the forfeit your your deposit. Um, you could be fined if you do something illegal, break the law. That's definitely a way for government to raise money. Uh, there's a lot of different miscellaneous revenues as well. So this one's the it is cheats. So that's uh, specifically related to uh, probate. So when people when people die and their assets go into probate, then the government actually, in some cases, can end up with that um, those assets or that money. So here we have budget control accounts. So we're, we're moving on to the budgetary side of things. So these are the control accounts. For every control account, you're also going to have a subsidiary ledger, right? So you got your subsids that, uh, so the control account, the balance in the control account should equal the combined balances in the subsidiaries that are connected to the control account. Okay, so there's the subsidiaries. So they're connected, and they work in in uh, combination. So we've got our revenues, our appropriations, which are expenditures, encumbrances, which are different. We're going to talk about those, and our estimated financing, which is kind of like a revenue, and, and estimated other uses, which is kind of like an expense. So here's the revenue side. So our revenues, we've got the general uh, debit. Right, estimated revenues is our control account. Estimated revenue control debit. So typically these budgetary items are set up opposite of the normal balances for like revenue. Normally we would have a credit. This this time the budgetary uh, account is set up as a as a debit, not a credit. It's the control account with the offsetting budgetary fund balance, and then the accounts on the side here on the bottom. Those are the subsids. So those should equal our control account of estimated revenues. That's the check you need to make. Okay, so here's our uh, expenditures uh, or our appropriations, I'd say. So the budgetary, the budgeted appropriations right there as a credit are our budgeted expenses, right? So that's uh, the control account there. Our estimated other financing uses are is another control account, right? So um, another control account, not necessarily a plug. We can get rid of that. So that's another control account, and then uh, those are the subsidiaries connected to that one specifically is connected to that control account, and then. Um, the other control accounted for appropriations are connected to the general government expenditures and public safety. Okay, so here's the receipt of revenue. So we did the budget, and now we're actually getting money in. So here's cash coming in. That's the debit, increasing cash, and it's also increasing revenues. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we can we can compare our revenues there to our budgeted revenue account. Those are the two that we're comparing. Okay, so here's our subsids that are also being uh, that are being credited, and so really we see in our subsids the true balance of the accounts coming out. Okay, so yep, so there's where our budget is is controlled. So each revenue account should have a comparable estimated revenue account to facility comparison. So that's really the comparison is we're making it with our initial budget setup and then as we get actuals in that's when we can compare those two uh, accounts together to see if we are under or over budget or if we're on track. So any differences should be uh, looked into further, right? Maybe there was an accounting error, maybe we're just blowing our budget. Or we're way under budget. One of the cases. So encumbrances and expenditures. So this is this is an important and a kind of a tricky part. So what happens is is when we uh, when we issue a purchase order, okay, and the purchase order is actually issued and signed, then an appropriation is created, and the appropriation 
Okay. Okay. So the appropriation is the budget. The purchase order creates an encumbrance. Once it's issued, the it's been encumbered. That means we have committed to spend some of our budget on that specific purchase order item. So when we when we finally uh, so and, and that's that's it's been encumbered. It means it's already spoken for, right? Already committed. Okay. So when our goods and services. Uh, that have been encumbered actually so when we actually order them and then they come in to us we receive our goods and services then at that time we can count them as expended okay so expended means that we create our budget right there our appropriations becomes uh, expended okay they're no longer appropriations right they're done they're expensed and then a liability is incurred so we create a liability on our accounts a payable basically is what it is so we haven't paid for it yet right we we ordered it uh, we we got it and now we say we need to pay it so that's when we say okay let's create a payable a liability and record the expense Okay, so this is the initial encumbrance setup. Okay, so our initial encumbrance setup is, okay, so we're saying $45,400 is encumbered and then the subsidies for these specific accounts, right? These are the specific accounts that have been encumbered. Uh, we've committed money out of those accounts for for this specific purpose right so it's actually reducing kind of reducing the budget right it's saying hey there's no more um, a budget available and then what happens is we actually um, the next step here is we uh, actually get the goods right so we then uh, create right there a reversal of the encumbrance okay so we're gonna say hey th this this is no longer encumbered we've got the goods and when we get the goods we're also going to uh, release the encumbrance on the general government and the public safety accounts. Okay, so that we reverse it, and that sets us up to say, okay, the money's there, and and we are going to pay it, right? And so that's really the bottom transaction here that we're going to have. So the very bottom is is our actually our actual payment of the liability that's now been set up. So those that's the liability uh, that we're setting up here on top in the subsid ledgers. And now we are uh, creating, uh, this is the actual payment, right? So there's the vouchers payable. So that's the liability right there, okay? All right, so so this is kind of the the way it works, right? So we've got our appropriation and our appropriation is our budget. We've got our encumbrance. Encumbrance can be considered a commitment, right? We're committed to purchase things, committed to buy them. Our expenditure is, hey, we bought them and we got the goods, so now we owe them money, whoever it is, our vendor. So that's a liability. Okay, the expenditure is a liability, and then the disbursement here in the end is the actual cash out the door. Cash is, is the very end.